Okay, so we are in uh, Introduction to Statistical Learning uh, in Chapter 6 here, and we're on Question 5, and you'll notice the exclamation point, um, meaning that this one uh, is uh, a little bit difficult. Um, and I agree that it is a little bit difficult, um, and especially the very last part, Part D. Um, and uh, when we get there, I'm actually not entirely confident that I have the best answer. I've seen other types of answers, but I wanted to solve it in my own way. Um, and so after going through that, if you think that my answer is incorrect or you have a better way of doing this, uh, please comment. I would like to uh, improve it if possible. Okay, so uh, here's the question. Um, I suppose that I will read this. Uh, so it is well known that ridge regression tends to give similar coefficient values to uh, correlated variables. Um, so in other words, uh, the, the, the beta 1 and beta 2, so if we had a regression of, that included beta 1 and beta 2, and if their corresponding x, or if their corresponding variables, x, call it x1 and x2, were highly correlated, then beta 1 and beta 2 would give you know, similar, uh, uh, the estimates would be similar. Okay? Whereas the lasso may give quite different coefficient values to correlated variables. We will now try to explore this property in a very simple setting. So suppose that we just have two subjects, okay, with two parameters, which I take to mean beta 1 and beta 2. Um, uh, uh, so the reason it's beta 1 and beta 2 instead of beta naught and beta 1 uh, is because, well, because of these normalization constraints here, okay, um, where y1 plus y2 equals 0, x1 plus x2 uh, equals 0, and so on and so forth, okay. Now we're told that the explanatory variables um, x1 and x2, and then for each subject, are such that for the uh, first explanatory variable, oops, 1, okay, uh, is, uh, is uh, equal uh, between the two subjects, uh, and also that x1 equals x2. Uh, I'm, I'm saying that very confusing. It's, it's hard to verbalize that, but, but we'll see the implications here shortly, okay? Um, Oh, I, I guess another reason why beta naught equals zero is we're told that it's equal zero here. Okay, so uh, let's go through these different parts. So first we want to write out the ridge regression optimization for this setting, okay? So generally we have uh, this for, uh, for, um, for the ridge regression. So we're trying to minimize this loss function here for ridge regression. And because we only have uh, n equals two and there's, and p equals two, Right, we can expand that out, okay, to where it looks. Well, we can expand it out without it becoming overwhelming, right? Because uh, because we just uh, well, we just write all of this out, okay. Um, so first we you know we we take uh, we take this and we break it out, and then we break out this summation into lambda plus beta one or lambda beta one lambda beta two squared, okay. Um, and so we get an expression that looks like this here. And because x11 equals x12 and x21 equals x22, right, we can just have x1 and x2, okay? And then because y1 equals negative y2, and we know that because y1 plus y2 equals 0, so y1 must equal negative y2, okay? And then similarly for x1 and x2, if x1 plus x2 equals 0, then x1 equals negative x2, okay? Um, so overall, so we, we plug those in and we should get an expression like this right here, okay? Um, I feel like there is possibility that I have made a mistake here, so if you catch it, please let me know. But I, if I made a mistake, I think it's because of these indexing variables. I think it's very easy for me to have maybe made a mistake uh, trying to keep track of the one one and then going down to just one uh, you know, just one or x1 or x2 and so on and so forth. But I think that this is correct. Okay. So now part B, argue that in this setting, the ridge, regressions, reg, ridge regression coefficient estimates satisfy beta 1 equals beta 2. Okay. Um, so, uh, so we can do that uh, and, and we can kind of do it rigorously and we will, but roughly because uh, there's only one actual x value here, and both betas are using, or you know, are corresponding to the same x value. Well, then, 
uh, we might intuitively already suspect that beta 1 should equal beta 2 because they're both coefficients for the same value x okay but we can also go uh, go ahead and try to solve this so the way that we would solve this is we would um, we would take the partial derivative of our loss function okay of this guy that we got in part a we would take its partial derivative with respect to beta 1 as well as to beta 2 so two different equations okay um, and then we would set them to 0 and then solve for beta 1 okay so uh, so when I take a couple steps down that road so here's my expression for oops here's my expression for beta 1 and for beta 2 now it's not all the way solved you can see because I still have beta 1 you know on the right hand side for the expression for beta 1 but the, the important thing to notice here is that the expression for beta 1 and beta 2 are the same okay and so because they're the same we have to conclude then that beta 1 equals beta 2 all right so now we come to part C and so now we're going to write out the, the lasso optimization problem in this setting okay so this is very similar to what we've already had except for now this penalty term is no longer using beta squared it's using the absolute value of the betas okay and so if we just go through the same steps that we did did above okay we should come out with this expression right here okay and notice the only thing that's really changed are these these beta guys right here okay. uh, and now we want to argue that in this setting the last row coefficients beta 1 and beta 2 are not unique okay in other words there's a many solutions to the optimization to this optimization problem up here okay so I'm, so um, so I'm going to go about solving this uh, in the same way that I tried to solve it up here. I guess just for a sense of symmetry or parity. Is parity the right word? I can't. I don't. I'm not sure. Uh, sounds like it could fit there. Um, and uh, and I and I'm saying that because I was looking online for solutions that maybe other people gave, and they do something quite a bit different. Um, I guess I could make a video on that if somebody really really wanted me to. Uh, and their solution is very elegant, but uh, but it, it kind of comes a little bit out of left field, I think. And so uh, so I just wanted to go this way because this is a familiar way of trying to solve for these coefficients. Okay, so if we take uh, the derivative of this loss function, we get this guy right here. Okay, so the derivative of the absolute value uh, of you know of lambda beta is this right here. Now it's defined everywhere except for zero. Uh, but, but we'll just plug along here. Okay. So we get these two guys. And then if we set these to zero to try to solve for the, the respective betas, okay, we get this. And you can kind of see, so you can see where the solution is going from here or the answer to the problem from here. But we can continue to get that, you know, the beta one term out of there by continuing to solve. I think I've done the algebra right, but even if I haven't, this should be correct. Um, and uh, And we can see we can see that the answer here already okay um so so these would be the expressions for beta one and oops geez my mouse is getting old okay for the expression for beta one and beta two here okay so um there's a couple of things to notice so right off the bat notice that the expressions for beta one and beta two are not identical and they're not identical because oh uh, actually there's a there's a small mistake right here let me let me fix this Okay, so they're not identical because whereas for beta 1, we have beta 2 up here in the numerator and beta 1 in the denominator, or the absolute value of beta 1, we have, you know, those are flipped for beta 2. So these are not the same expression. So beta 1 does not equal, uh, it generally does not, it does not necessarily equal beta 2. Okay, so, so we know that these coefficients are going to be different than the ones from ridge regression, right, where we found that, that beta 1 and beta 2 are equal to one another in this particular context. Okay. Um, now, uh, now that's interesting, um, but remember that what we're supposed to show is that the, that the solutions for beta 1 and beta 2 are not unique. In other words, that there's many solutions for beta 1 and beta 2. And I think that this is actually a little bit overdetermined. And so the way to see that is two things show up on the right-hand side of these equations. Okay, so we'll take, you know, we'll take this, you know, this version right here. So for beta 1, notice that there's two things on the right-hand side of this equation. There's beta 2. And there's the absolute value for beta 1, okay? Well, let's just focus on the fact that there's beta 2 over here. This means that beta 1 and beta 2 are, you know, they're, they're, related, to, they're related to one another, okay? They're defined in terms of, of one another. So, uh, so that means, then, that, um, that different 
that many different values for beta 1 and beta 2 could conspire to create the same outcome y, that, right, the same value for y, right? You know, we could move beta 1 up a little and beta 2 down a little, and we'd get, you know, the same value of y, and then move, move beta 1 up again, uh, beta 2 down again, and we'd get the same value for y, right? And, and we could do that infinitely many times, okay? The other thing to notice is that, uh, that, that both beta coefficients are defined in terms of their own absolute value. And, of course, the absolute value implies two possible values, right? So even if the beta, you know, the, the opposing beta term defining a beta term was not an issue, we still have this issue of these absolute values, uh, uh, you know, always defining two, uh, two separate values uh, for the right-hand side of the equation. So, okay. Um, I hope that was reasonably clear. And like I said, especially this last part, um, I am not completely confident that I have given a great answer here. So if you have better answers, um, then uh, please let me know.